All right, so now let's analyze how we figure out the internal rate of return on an income or slash immediate annuity. Because it's important to understand this as well. Uh, we just did one on a second ago on what, how do you know if uh, immediate annuity is right for you. And now we're going to say, let's just assume it is. How do we analyze the actual return we get? Because it's different than a simple stock or bond. So let's dive right into this. And again, we're going back and oh yeah, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, down below uh, for sure. Then thumbs up and comments always help me with the YouTube algorithms. So we're looking at the Canex.com uh, place here. And again, this is through Canada, but they uh, do some this North America annuities. Uh, so what is my return with an income annuity? IRR, internal rate of return. Uh, the performance of most uh, the financial prod, pro, uh, products is measured by the yield or interest that is produced. In the case of an income annuity, there is both an insurance and an investment element that supports the return you receive. As a result, catal calculating and explaining a total return or yield is a little bit more difficult. This analyst analysis provides you with one way to review the return for a lifetime income annuity because remember, you're getting a insurance investment element that supports the return you receive. So there's two things going on here that you got to understand. I'd actually say it's more like this. Uh, you're getting the principal and you're getting your return of principal and income as well. So that's why it's a little bit different to look at than just a straight interest rate on a bond or a CD. All right. So what is the internal rate of return? Uh, okay. So difficult ways you can evaluate the return of an investment for products that fluctuate with the market, like a mutual fund. You can look at past performance for a one, three or five year time period period uh, for products that offer a fixed account, like a CD or a bond. Uh, you typically know what your return is going to be up front. You're getting the yield. That's uh, as long as the bond or CD doesn't go bankrupt. That's what you're going to get. No more, no less. In the case of the income annuity you're considering, there's no set duration of time. Uh, period, because payments continue whether or not, uh, whether you or your spouse are alive. And so they will continue as long as you're breathing. So there's no fixed time period unless you know for a fact when you're going to die. There is no satisfactory way to calculate a yield because we don't know how long you're going to live. And the yield actually increases the longer either of you live. And we'll show you here in just a second because this chart over here is pretty sweet. One solution is to determine how much cumulative income you would receive each year into the future in relation to your initial investment. I actually like that. The graph on the right shows a year-to-year -year yield for the income annuity you're considering. Does this income annuity provide you a good return? It depends uh, if, if you're living to old age. The yield will be seen pretty good. If you die early and within the first 20 years, it won't be so much. I mean, because look at this. If you live uh, 50 years, you're looking at 4.5%, and that's 5% rate of return. Not too shabby. How to interpret the IRR curve. The time horizon to evaluate the return of a lifetime income annuity should extend beyond your life expectancy since one of the primary benefits of the product is to protect you from living too long. The table on the bottom right provides estimates of your longevity as it correlates to the later years in the graph. So here we got a, a couple. Uh, let's see here. All right. So they got uh, 50. Uh, let's see a couple. How old are they? Do we uh, get where you got to go here? Uh, well, I guess we got to start up here. Never mind. We'll go into that. All right. So early on, the, your rate of return would depend on the type of guarantee you select with your income annuity contract. You selected a contract with a 20 year certain. Uh, this means that if both you pass away before the guaranteed period within the first 20 years, your beneficiaries would receive their remaining income payments until the end of that period. So in other words, your estate is guaranteed to receive at least $260,000 to $880 of the first during the first 20 years, which is why you see a flat IRR 0.47. So we know we're, how much you put in there, 100000 bucks. Does it tell us here? Hold on just a second. Does it tell us how much we're putting in there? A two hundred five. Okay, so we are uh, we're putting two hundred fifty thousand in there. It doesn't tell us how old we are, does it? All right, two hundred fifty thousand. But I don't see how old we are here. So we're putting two hundred fifty thousand with a twenty year period certain, and it doesn't tell us how old we are, which would affect the initial payment. All right, so I don't get it. So it doesn't tell us how old we are. But anyway, we're putting 200,000 in there. We know for 250,000 in there, we know for a fact that our estate will get 260,000 to 880 back. No, no other way around that. So we're going to make $10,880 over those 20 years, which is effective IRR of 0.47. So, you know, nothing to write home about. 
However, the, your rate of return continues to increase over time. So here's 20, year 21, here's 22, 23, you can see that. And you can see it's growing each and every year you or your spouse survives 20 years. And so they're shoot, telling us right here, uh, 50, there's a 50% chance your, your surviving spouse, so let's just say Josh and Charlotte, Josh dies early, there's a 50% chance that we'll live for 34 years, which gives us an IRR 3.84%. So I might die in year one, but she's going to live in year till year 34, 50% of the time, one of us will survive. There's a 25% chance one of us will live 40 years, which gives us an IRR 4.36. And there's a 10% chance one of us will live 45 years, again, which is an IRR, internal rate of return, 4.64. So let's just say we're, I don't know, six years old today. We're good health, don't smoke, long genes, the whole thing. Uh, if we live 45 years, this return's looking pretty good. And if we only live uh, 20 years, this return doesn't look so good. And that's the risk. But at least we know if we live longer, we're still going to get paid and it's not going away. And the longer we live, the more rate of return we get on our initial deposit. So, I mean, this is what makes annuity so great. So if you die, you're 15, it stinks for you. You're dead. I mean, really it doesn't, but you're dead. You don't know anymore, but at least you got some money for your annuity without worry because the insurance company guaranteed it. Now, if you, and so you didn't make much return, but at least you got your money back without risk. If you die, you're 45. Well, you live for a whole lot longer and your annuity paid out for all those years, which increased your rate of return too. So it's a win-win. You die too early, at least your estate gets something and you didn't have to worry about the risk of the portfolio dropping 50%. If you live too long, you still get paid and the IRR, your internal rate of return increases as well, which is kind of nice. All right, so uh, let's see. The summary provides you one way to interpret the uh, the yield from an income annuity over the uh, course of time. If you want to compare the yield from a life annuity, okay, there we go. We just uh, and we're assuming these people were born in 1958, which what makes them. If I'm well, here's my trusted calculator. So we have 2018. I guess that makes them 60, right? No, yeah, 60. That's 1958. Yeah, six years old. So they're 68 years old. Good health, husband and wife, male and female. Uh, born 1958, a 20 year life certain. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to go on the whiteboard here and we'll combine these two uh, things. I'm going to show you how this works a little bit more. So stay tuned because I, I want to dive into this a little bit deeper. All right. And again, we got a thousand dollars a month of income. All right. So stay tuned because we're going to show it. We're going to add to this. Hold on just a second. All right. So we're going to strategize a little bit on using an income annuity. All right. So a couple of things we have to keep in mind is according to what we're just told, is we have 200, and what, uh, in terms of the uh, Canix, the website they gave us in terms of giving us a, a quote on an annuity, we're taking $250,000. All right, so we've got a husband and wife, married filing jointly, man and female, and they're 60 years old. All right, so we got HW, 60 years old. They're putting $250,000 into an income annuity, and it pays them. 1087 a month, and that's 13044 a year. 20 year period certain. So what that simply means is we know for a fact that somebody is going to get this amount times that amount, which is $260,880. Either the husband or wife or their heirs will get another uh, 10,000 more than essentially than they put it. Not a great rate of return. In fact, the Canix is about 0.47 IRR in total rate of return. So if these guys die tomorrow, uh, no, hardly any money to be made on this annuity, but at least they'll get their money back. And that gives you a, a relative peace and security. So if they died in year 15, they lose money, but their heirs will still get a little bit more back than they put in. So at least you know for a fact you're going to get your principal back plus a little bit of interest. Won't be much, but you're not lo you're guaranteed not to lose anything as long as the insurance company uh, doesn't go bankrupt. All right. So after 20 years, now what if they live 30 years? All right. So here's where it gets interesting. So if they live 30 years, they're going to get uh, 13044 for 30 years, which gives us. Let me get my trusty calculator. You ready? Because this is where it gets kind of fun to strategize. So we get 13044. Oops. 391,320. 391,320, which is 140,000 what they put in, which is not too shabby, actually. So then what we got to do is we got to figure out our, our eternal rate of return if they live 30 years. And it would be. 
oops, we got 250,000 as our initial payment. Present value, excuse me, 13,044 is our payment. Zero future value, 30 years. 3.17, so three, eh, basically 3.175. So 3.17 is our IRR, all right? Return over rate of return, 3.17. So what does that mean? Well, that simply means if we live 30 years, we're going to get $391,000, which is IRR 3.17. If we live 20 years, we'll only get $260,000, which is an IRR of 0.47, which isn't much. I mean, that's just, you know, that's less than 1% a year, and it's taxable, so you're losing for sure. But the interesting thing is, let's say a 30-year treasury. Now, at the end of this uh, 30 years that both husband and wife die, what's the residual value? It's nothing. There's nothing left over zero so they make nothing left all right so again i just want to reiterate as long as one person is breathing the annuity will pay out if they breathe for 40 years the annuity will pay out if they breathe for 10 years and they die the annuity will pay out for another 10 years because there's a 20 year period certain and i always suggest to people get that period certain i'm just telling you i always do because at least you know your heirs will at least get back what you put in if you just do it based on your joint lives and you get hit by that proverbial bus or drunk driver you're going to lose your money. So at least get a period certain that guarantees somebody will get something back. Now, if you live 30 years, a 3.17, not too shabby. But then you have to say, okay, Josh, what's a 30-year treasury doing right now? And for simplicity, we're going to say 4%. All right? We're going to say 4% is what 30-year treasury is doing. All right? So, so far, so good. You with me? Because we're going to compare the income that the annuity gives us on our $250,000 to the income a, we could get on a 30-year treasury bond. And so here we're trying to generate 13044 a year in income. And a 30-year treasury, oops, uh, 13044 oops, ah. It costs $326,000 for a 30-year treasury to give us that $13,044 a year in income. But what happens is after 30 years, we have $326,000. Oh, that's not very good, is it? We have $326,000 left to show for it. Whereas on the annuity, we don't have that. Now, there's a method to my madness here. And I haven't really run these numbers, so it'll be interesting to see. All right, so after 30 years, we got 326,000, the annuity's got nothing. So you see where I'm going with this? We need $13,044 a year. 250,000 will give us an annuity that pays that. 326,000 will give us a, a, on a treasury bond will pay it. But if the annuity gives us nothing, the treasury bond gives us a residual of 326,000. But the treasury, uh, the annuity will give us uh, 75,000 less from our liquidity that we can work with. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, what happens if, watch this, and I don't know the answer to this. I'm not, I haven't run my answer, my numbers yet. So we have 250 or 326. And we say, well, we're going to take our 250, go the annuity, and we're going to take our difference of 76,000, and we're going to invest it in the total stock market index. And we're going to see what that looks like after 30 years. And I don't know the answer to this. I have a sneaky suspicion. Oh man, that's just not working, is it? Oops, ah, 76,000 bucks, there we go. All right, so with me so far, and we're just gonna say we're gonna get 7% a year. What will that look like after 30 years? Well, let's take a look. So we got, take our trusty calculator. We know for a fact, All right, so I had a can't. I just got a flash flood warning, so it messed up my phone, my system here. All right, so we got seventy-six thousand dollars difference. We got two fifty, three twenty-six generates the same amount of money. Three twenty-six after 10, uh, thirty years, we still have three hundred twenty-six thousand left in it. The annuity got nothing, so but we have seventy-six thousand to work with. So we take our trusty calculator and we say, okay, we're going to get uh, seventy-six thousand dollars is our present value, no payments. Go for 30 years, 
7% interest, the future value is $578,000. That doubles every 10 years. So after lunch, I just got to make sure. So we have 76,000 times two. That'd be 10 years of worth 152 times two. Yeah, that's right. So that's, that's yeah, there you go. Now, if you got 8% on that guy, $764,000. You see where I'm going with this, my friends? The annuity, yes, it zeroes out. The treasury bond gives you 326,000 bucks. At 7% a year, that's 76,000 now worth 578,000. The annuity is worth 328. If you got 8% a year, it's worth, what did I say? Uh, 765,000. That's the difference in an annuity. It gives you enough money to free up to use towards other investments that can grow better for you, theoretically. Now that might not grow, I don't know. We've never had a 30 year track record since the dawn of the stock market, but again, that's only 100 years. So let's, not, let's be realistic here. The America of the last 100 years is very unique, very unique. Does it mean Amer it won't be like that? No, does it mean it will be like that? I have no idea. But the America of the last 100 years was very, very favorable to investors, that's for sure. Will it be like that over the next 100 years? I have no idea. But I do know, this is guaranteed, this is not. So for the lack of guarantee, you're potentially going to produce another three or four, uh, I mean, four or five, almost $450,000, depending on your rate of return. That's a big deal. Would it be worth the risk? I think so. I would absolutely. If I need $13,044 a year in income, I put $250,000 in an income annuity. I'm not putting it into a bond. I'm going to take the income every year, and I'm going to take the residual that I have left over from the difference between the bond versus the income annuity, and I'm going to put it in the market and let that sucker roll. I got my money guaranteed. On top of that, I'm going to let the stock market do what its magic could possibly do, which could give my heirs a whole heck of a lot more money than this right here. That's a big deal. And if this is outside an IRA, tax-free because it's step-up in basis as well. So I'm just telling you, this is not a bad idea at all for a strategy perspective on how an income annuity can really play a big deal for you when it comes to figuring out your eternal rate of return. You can't just look at an annuity. You got to look at the annuity and the residual that you can use because of the fact that bonds take more principal allocated to it to get the same money a level of income. 13044 13044 Less goes in the annuity, more goes in the bonds. The amount you can do, the difference, you can use it drastically to increase your overall net worth. All right, hope this helps. As always, don't forget to subscribe down below. Questions, thoughts, concerns, love to hear them. And we'll see you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.